everybody. Happy Monday. Let's uh, see what we got on tap today. I think we're just finishing up some Java FX stuff. Wanted to look at two-dimensional arrays or array lists for you folks as well. And uh, it's a lot of work time for the project. I think that's all we had left, right? And we had voted to skip the quiz because, uh, again, we kind of went off... Um, the, the book has you go all programmatically, where you can create these objects by hand. There's nothing wrong with that, and you get a lot of flexibility and control over them. But I think for what we're doing, um, just focusing on Java FX will be enough for us. Grab this. So I think we've got just a little bit today. I'll, I'll start NetBeans in the background and let that load for a little while. I've not ordered my new laptop yet. I've got to gotta go order one. We'll see. Um, let me get chat here on my phone. What are you going to get? I was thinking about the next Surface book because I'm a big Microsoft fanboy. Um, and the touch screen that I can draw on is so huge. Like, that's so nice. I'm, I mean, other places have stuff like that too, but I used to really like this because I could go to the Somerset Mall and like get it prepared in person. Mm -hmm. And with the first edition I had, uh, this is, I think, I think this is my third one. Oh, I forget. Um, when someone went wrong with it, they would just swap it right at the store. They're like, oh, okay, we'll, we'll take this one back and refurbish it. Here, here's a new one. Yeah. <laughs> here's, it's replaced. Um, so they don't do that now that the store is closed, which is sad. It's but closed? Yeah. Oh, yeah Microsoft yeah. closed all their retail stores. It was a bummer. It's, I mean, they, they weren't going to last during the pandemic, and they already weren't doing great before. So uh, I was kind of bummed about that, but I that's okay. Right there, so. I kind of like that a lot. Yeah, it, it was nice, but it's okay. It was not Apple. Like it just, it wasn't. So, yeah. So that's what we got today. Um, had definitely a couple questions. Um, array lists versus arrays. I, I think either will be fine for our purposes. Um, let's take a look at our GUI fund. This is when we were working out with our coffee shop, right? Open this one up. Yeah, here we go. So it all happens in the controller, right? And the, the controller will create the instances and have references to the other classes here. So we had that drink class that we were using, and we added our own class level attribute. Right? We said, hey, I want a drink that is our selected drink. So anything that's at FXML is coming from your FXML which is, is pretty straightforward. So generally, we don't change those. If we want to change something with that, we go back to Scene Builder and deal with it. But you can add in your own attributes here. And then, again, uh, you can add a constructor, but essentially this initialize is the constructor as well. And then once initialize is happening, all of your FXML attributes are created. So in an actual constructor, if I tried to set something with this checkout button, it would be null and it's not going to exist. So you're better off just use the initialize method that happens that initializes all the buttons and then your stuff can happen. So we can make the drink and we can set all the labels that we want to, that sort of thing. So if we wanted to make some sort of map or this, this 2D list to track, hey, this is what we we're, you know, I said at least a 10 by 10 is fine. Um, you know, we wanted to have a room class that has all those attributes. So things about room, it knew how much gold it had, it knew if it was blocked or not, and it knew whether or not it had an NPC. So you could add all those in a constructor if you wanted. You could make it random, you could control it. Um, you have lots of different choices on how you want to lay this out. Um, but if you just want to make them all random, we just have the constructor be random. Um, and honestly, if you, if you just get stuck in the maze because all the rooms around it were blocked, then that's fine, right? Maybe just decrease the chance of the room being blocked in the constructor and see how see how it goes but um, not not too concerned um, if it if it generates a bad maze initially don't worry about it like just close it restart and, and try it again uh, but to make that list we would either have an array of a given type so for now I'm just going to use string and you, you know you can use a room class here so we can use an array of arrays and we're going to think of this as you have rows and columns. So every array, the first one then, is another array full of columns. So this is every row and every column. So we might call this our, our map equals a new string array. And now we have to give it a size. 
right? So how, how big do we want this one to be? Well, if we wanted it to be 10 by 10, we'd say I want it to be 10 by 10. Uh, string. There we go, no parentheses, that's right. So this would be a 10 by 10 map. Now, with reference types, all of these are going to be null to start with the default. So I have 10 by 10 of null, 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 null. So 10 rows of 10 columns, null, 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 null. But now I can go through and I can say, hey, my map at index of some row, uh, or in, in my code, sorry, in my code, I could go, like in this initialize, we could go through and assign some letters. Again, letters aren't exactly what we want to have happen, but that's okay. So I'd say my map at row index. So I have zero through nine because it's size 10 when we're dealing with arrays. So map of zero, column of zero. So it's row, column, right? The first one's the row, which row am I looking at? And the next one's the column equals test or something. You can do something like that. Now I'm gonna put a breakpoint in and we can actually look at this in the debugger, which is pretty fun. Uh, let me do one more one more line. So I'll do test here and then let's do, how about nine and nine? Um, we'll have test end and test start. All right, so let's run this in debug mode. And we should actually be able to look at this 2D array, two-dimensional array in the debugger and see what those values are, which is kind of fun. It just takes a second. There we go. So this is the, the stack right now, by the way. There's a lot of funky stuff that happens behind the scenes to make this thing run. Right? We're all the way through all here. Don't worry about any of that. Right? We just know we're here at initialize line 66. So I'm going to just step real quick, and then it's under this because it's, in cla it's a class level attribute. So I'm going to see it under this. I'm going to see map as my string array array, 2D array of strings. I can open that up. Each one of these then is the row. Sorry, that's real small on the screen here. Um, I don't know if I can make that any bigger right now. Hopefully it's not too small on the stream. But you can open up each row then and you see each column. And you can see the values 0 through 9, right? So it's row index and then column index are the inner indexes here. And I can see I have test start over here. We step on down. I'll see now 9 of 9 is now test end. Real tiny, but that's what's happening here with the with the 2D arrays. And again, arrays, they're fine. There's nothing wrong with them, but they're fixed in size. So once you say it's size 10, it's stuck at size 10 forever. So we, we can't ever like add to this map if we wanted to. Um, we'd have to make a new map and then copy things over, which isn't the end of the world, but um, that's okay. So if we wanted to make a 2D array list is the other option. We do an array list then of type here with these little... Um, greater than or less than signs, and then we gotta add our import for array list. Array list of type array list of type string. So the first array list, what it contains is array lists of type string. Again, these are the rows, and then this array list of strings are the columns, essentially, inside of each one of those. Um, oh, I did this bad way, I'm sorry. This should be done in initialize. We'll declare up here, uh, oh, we're going to call this um, array list, um, I don't know, map array list. Okay. Now down in the initialize, then we can actually set these things up. I'm just moving this so it wasn't put up in the, um, you can technically declare things and like instantiate them when they're declared up here, but it's bad form. So I apologize for that. So I just moved it down, so where we actually create it as a new. So all those new keywords should pretty much go down in here, unless it's a static variable. All right, so we have the map, and then if we want to do a map with array lists, then it is a new array list of type. Now, the funny thing is, Java knows that array lists are the type that you tell them up here. So you don't have to repeat the types again. So you just say, hey, it's a new array list. And it knows implicitly 
what it is because you've already told it what it is. So you can say it's a type of array list of type string if you want. It's just going to warn you here and say, oh, hey, you could just use the diamond inference and you don't have to repeat it again here. So if you don't like those little yellow lines, you just take it out and it knows what it is. So now the problem is it's empty. With an array, it's a 10 by 10 of null. Right now, I don't have any size of any size. Right? It's just completely empty. So what I need to do then is I need to loop and for 10 rows, put 10 things in each one. Right? So now I could say for int row index is 0. Row index is less than 10 because that's the size I want. I want row index plus plus. Let's go up one, one row each. Now for every row, I need to put a new row in. I need to actually create the row that I'm going to then add all the columns to. So I'm going to take my map array list and I'm going to add a new array list of type string. Um, parentheses. There we go. So this adds the new row as an empty row. Then once I have an empty row, then I can loop through and add all the columns. So I'll say for int column index is zero. Column index is less than 10. Column index plus plus. Now for every column that I want, I want to take my map array list and I want to get the row index. So whatever row I just added at this index, go get that array list out. This new one here. Get that array list. And then with that array list, I want to add to it a string. And sure, I can just put an empty string. Right? Or whatever value I want here. Right? This will add and columns to the new row, essentially. So this will fill it up now with blank string. So the advantage of doing it this way, which seems like it's harder than just saying, hey, I want a 10 by 10, is that you get to pick the values. Right? And I might not know what the values are, but at least it's not null. So I'm getting 10, actually 100, right? 10 by 10 empty strings um, versus a bunch of 10 by 10 nulls. Uh, Crow, it's it's bad form. Um, it, you want everything that gets initialized to essentially be in the constructor. You want all the code to be in the same place. So if you have some variables that get initialized up here, like I had when I said, "Hey, this was a new new uh, string array of ten ten." Now some of my code gets initialized here, and some of my code gets initialized in. This, again, we're kind of essentially calling this the constructor. It's just can, kind of confusing. So. The constructor's job is to create instance, set all your attributes, give them values, so let the constructor do it. And that's why it's better form. So two different types here. And then to get individual values, right, you get the row and you would get the column. So then if I want to change any of these, right, it would be um, map array list. And I want to call um, get the row index here. So getting the row, I'm not changing the row, right? The getting the row gives me, hey, here's the array list at this row. Then from here, then I want to call set. I want to set index zero to, uh, what do we say, test start. And then if I want to do the last one, it's my map array list, get nine, we'll get the last row, set index nine to test end. Uh, set. So set is for changing values, but we're not changing the row, we're changing a column inside of that row. So you can't use set the row, because you'd have to give it a brand new array list of all 10 items here. I only want to set one of the columns within that row. So the, the syntax gets a little bit funky if you're dealing with array lists, so it might be easier just to go with arrays, as much as I love array lists. Um, I've been doing it often enough, so like I don't get cross-eyed looking at a get set um, and that kind of just makes sense in my head, but it, it might take a little bit of a um, little bit of time to, to get used to that syntax if you're using array lists. So you're getting the row out at an index, setting a column. Or if you just want to get that column, it's get the row, get the column. You know, get get. If you're getting them both, rather than hey, here's the row, here's the column. Could I do like set get? So setting won't then let you get anything out of it. So if you're setting something, 
you'd have to set the entire row and you'd have to give it an array list of strings here. Now, the one advantage of array lists is that they can be different sizes. So if you wanted your maze to not be a perfect 10 by 10 square and you wanted like some to be longer and some to not be as long and some to be longer or you wanted like to be like kind of a triangle shape, you can do that with an array list really easily. With an array, it's not so easy. Like it literally is a square. I mean, we, we could make it a rectangle, I guess. We could, but it would be, um, what's the word, jagged. You can have like some longer and some not as long with array lists. With arrays, it's got to be a nice rectangle. Right, this many rows, this many columns, and for all of them. Um, so, again, you know, this is a little more flexible if you wanted to do more interesting things with your maze. We don't need to do more interesting things right now, but it, it gives you the option later on if you wanted. Um, so this, it's the row. That's the, that's no apostrophe there. So that's the item, the column index. So. With arrays, the get and set is the same syntax. With array lists, right, getting is one, setting is the other. So different methods there with array lists. What does that make sense for our two-dimensional array then, for how we can set up that maze? How's it going? Um, so if you want, then instead of like adding this, if you had a constructor for room that just would randomly generate some gold, randomly generate an NPC or not, randomly be blocked or not, you can just let the constructor do it. Right? Or you can set them all as empty and then do a bunch of sets yourself. Right? You could set 100 different rooms if you really care to. Um, it's just a bunch of copy-pasting. Like, most of them are going to be pretty much the same. Right? Not too big of a deal there. Um, right? So if you wanted to do your own design, you could like make the 10 by 10 grid and then say, okay, this one's blocked, and this one's blocked, and this one's blocked, and like make your own hallways and all sorts of fun stuff. Um, whatever you're interested in. If you just want to let it be random and the maze is stupid, that's, that's honestly, that's okay. Like We're not looking for actually interesting gameplay right now we're just looking at can we kind of get some pieces working together here um, once you've got that there then you can do some more interesting stuff with your your gameplay and start tweaking things so um, you know, again it's our first class so not not looking for anything crazy and perfect um, just looking for something functional okay all right so those are 2d arrays and array lists feeling good about that at least feel like we're off to a good start Cool. Anything else you wanted to see in Java FX? Um, using the class is the idea here, right? So we're going to have that player class. The room is the maze, right? We have a hundred different rooms in that maze, and then the maze will have the NPC associated with the room. So we don't need to have an NPC necessarily in the controller. We'll have the location of where our player is. We probably need to track their row and column location. Right, So if we know the row and column location, we can get the room from the maze, and then the maze can have an NPC or not that's alive or dead. And we can get all the information from the room at this maze, row and column, and then get the NPC out. Um, someone had asked about dealing with nulls. So if we had, let's just, let's just mock one up real fast. Like if we had a room here, and, and if we had a NPC class, so if room has an instance of NPC, right? If there is no NPC, you could just be none. So you know, in our constructor room here, you know, do some random thing, but you know, NPC can be null. If it's null, bad things can happen if we don't know that it can be null. But if you know that it might actually be null, when you go ask for it in the, con in the controller, you say, hey, room, give me your NPC. You need to then go check if it's null before you try and do anything with that NPC so it doesn't crash. Right? Before you try and display some stats and say, oh, here's how many hit points it has or here's what its strength is or anything about it, right? we need to go and check for it. So when we add methods here, we'll just add like a set and get here for fun. Add sets and gets. Right, and then in our controller, we can actually make this a type room then, right? Room, room. Um, this needs to be a type room. And then this would be a new room. Uh, so this would have to be a new, let me see, uh, a new room. 
new room. This could be a new room. And this one would be a new room. So this is kind of silly at this point if we've already done it up here, but you could go make new rooms or if you wanted to like get some values there. Um, map array list, get zero, get zero dot set NPC to a new NPC or something like that. So get the row, get the column, then, hey, I want to add an NPC in this room here. Go for it. And again, constructors or from there, you can go get your NPC back out. So if you wanted to go set some labels, right, I might have some uh, string for an NPC label. Equals, I don't know, something here plus all of this uh, dot get NPC. Oh, that's no good. Hang on, let's do this as a NPC. How about the current NPC? Current room NPC? So asking a room, right? Getting the room out of the maze, getting the NPC there. This could be null. So if I'm going to go do something, I need to check if my current room NPC is not null. Then I can go do something here. I should spell something better. So we're going to check if it actually exists or not. So if it's null, there was no NPC in that room, okay, fine, they can sleep in here, they can search for gold, they can continue playing in the maze. If it is not null and it's actually there, okay, we can go set the label, we can show some buttons, we can have them fight, whatever they want to do here. That's an option. Um, this is probably the, the better object-oriented approach, right? So we're asking our room object, which is here, at this row, at this column, for its NPC, get this NPC out, Go see if it's actually there or not. And if it's not there, do whatever, right? Else, well, NPC, other options. Fighting, I don't know. Fighting or running. Does that make sense? How we could then take a room that might have this attribute, and it, it, if it's null or not, right? Again, in your constructor, make it random if you want. It's probably the easiest way. So instead of just always being null, you could check, hey, if, a, if pick a random number, if it's this, put an NPC there. And NPC, then you can have a constructor that gives it the random stats, the one through six hit points, and then double that for all of its other stats. Go for it. You got lots of options here. Does that make a little bit more sense then? Okay, trying to, try to make sure you've got enough of what you need. Um, sometimes putting those pieces together is hard. Right? We've done all of these things essentially, uh, but like fitting them together the right way. Um, is, is a little tricky, especially if you've never done it before. So um, here, here's a couple a couple ideas. Again, not the only route, but um, I think this might be pretty straightforward for you. Um, so again, if you're using the room object, I think array list, I mean, as you're building it, you're making them, you can do these same loops with your empty 10 by 10 map as well essentially for row index, for column index, and just set it be a new room. That's fine. Instead of one at a time, don't do one at a time. Right? Don't do this 100 times. Right? At least use a loop. Right? If you're going to use the straight arrays to make all those be new rooms, because they're going to start off as null. Here. That's their default value. Right? Anything else you wanted to see? I want to talk about? I think if not, we've got time just to work on the project. You can answer any other questions. Um, we got time to just, uh, we got two weeks now from today, right? When we're presenting on the 20th. Mm -hmm. So either that's good because you can get the rest of your finals out of the way and then focus on this one, or maybe we've got this week to try and polish it up, get it close to ready. We got all, all of today, the rest of the day, you have all of Wednesday, and then all of next week um, if you want to work on it then as well. We got all the class time set aside for it. Um, I definitely recommend you be pretty much done by the 15th. Um, I've got a bunch of you folks and very limited time over the weekend um, as we're getting closer to the holiday season. So trying to meet with folks outside of the regular times is going to get much harder as we get after the 15th. Okay. And I have to get all my other class stuff graded and in and submitted. They give you 
They want it within two business days. No, two days. I don't even think they call them business days. So, like, they count weekends, which is stupid. Uh, but no one checks. Uh, essentially, two business days after the class, other classes end to get grades in. So, while you guys are wrapping up, I've got to be getting all the other final projects and other things graded from the other classes I have. So, um, it'll be a little nuts that week. But hopefully, we've got with four blocks, uh, three and a half blocks of time here. Last blocks, we can work on it, great. Uh, if you're working with a partner, fantastic. Um, I can set it up so you can both use the same repository if you want. If you don't want to go that route, that's okay. There's no no problems there. You're welcome to send files back and forth other ways, um, and that's okay. Um, I know Git can be a little intimidating sometimes, but um, if you both want to work in the same repository, just make sure when you start, you click this little fetch button to make sure you have any latest and greatest changes before you start making them. And then essentially it just works. Um, if you both change the same file and you both try and commit to it, the first one to commit is going to work. The second one's going to run into errors and you'll get some funny stuff. Uh, here's uh, some 2D arrays and room ideas. So this little fetch up here. Right, before you start, if someone else is working in your repository, click that button and it might change to a pull option. Pull means there's changes you need to pull down to your repository. And you always want to do that before you start. It's good, good practice. I mean, I'm the only one changing this one, so I apologize I haven't been showing that. Um, but no one else touches this one. So just double-click the fetch. It'll think for a minute. Make sure you don't have any more recent changes. And you can go from there. All right. Cool. So I think we've got time to work on stuff. If you've got questions about the GUI, let me know. Um, questions about anything else, any of the other classes, uh, we can go from there. Um, 21, a 10 by 10 map. No, so you don't need to track, um, like keys from moving around. Uh, I, my, my thought was you'd have like buttons in your FXML page that would say like, here's a north or up, here's a south or down, here's a east or right. Um, and those buttons, then you can click on them and they'll just move you that direction. So if you're going to the right, right, it's one plus one on your column. If you're going down, it's plus one on your row. Going up is minus one on the row. Going to the left is minus one on the column. So make sure they don't fall off the edge. So at like anything at row zero, you can't go further up. Either turn the button off with that disable option. Um, or you can just say, hey, if they click it, don't do anything. And in the little log of text, say, hey, you can't go anywhere. You can't go that direction. You know, that way is blocked or something. Um, any way you want to go about that, it's fine when, once you're dealing with the map. So then you can start them in any location. If you want to start them at 0, 0, great. If you want to start them in the middle at like 4, 4 or 5, 5, go for it. Start them in the middle. It doesn't really matter. Um, just pick somewhere and say, hey, here's where the player is. Start in this location. Um, yeah, that, that's sort of the idea. 21. So in your FXML, let me open this. You could just throw a couple buttons in for up, down, left, right, or north, south, east, west. Um, dealing with the keyboard input gets a little trickier. Um, it's doable. You have to... The, the way that it grabs keyboard input is a little funky. Um, it has to happen at this anchor pane level. But then when they're dealing with other elements, you also have to be watching for the same thing, which can get a little funky. So... Uh, at this point, I don't recommend dealing with keyboard input. Uh, just add like four different buttons and say, hey, here's an up button, here's a down button, right? You just throw four buttons in here. You know, up, down, left, right, or north, south, east, and west. I feel like those should be easier to say, but I always trip up saying the, the directionals, uh, mm -hmm. cardinal directions. So just throw a couple in there, right, and up, down, left, right sort of things here. And then they can click those. So you'll have event handlers for, hey, I want to go this direction. Okay, hey, can we go up a row? Which means minus one on the current row index. Can we go right? That's plus one column. Down one is plus one row. Left is minus one column. And if they go there, great. If they can't go there, hey, check if it's a valid index, if it's within the array, great. Then make sure it's not blocked. Right? Go and ask the room, hey, are you blocked or not? And, oh, there was a cave in in that room or whatever you want to say. You can't go that direction. Um, so that it's within the maze, within the 10 by 10, right? It's between a zero and nine row and column, and then it's not blocked if it's within. So a couple options there for navigating it. Um, if you want to tell them locations, I, I don't 
sure. I mean, if you want to just display on your your page somewhere so that it makes sense for you, hey, you're currently at 3-3, just as it's not going to mean anything to the player, but like so that way you know what's happening on your maze, go for it. Like you're welcome to have additional things on your page that make sense to you, um, like a debug or a, is it a, the console. You can open up and, and see all the behind-the-scenes stuff. Go for it. Um, again, we're going for functional. doesn't necessarily have to be like pretty and fun-looking. So that's kind of the idea with that, 21. Get the get everything off the checklist done first, and then overcomplicate it your heart's desire. I mean, that's sort of the goal is that you can have some fun with it, but try not to have too much fun until like you've got all the points in the bag. Um, and I'm happy to look at these early. Um, I know some of my Tuesday night class was mostly done by the end. He stayed till like 9:45 last Tuesday, and, and just pretty much finished up. And I would look at it. I was like, oh yeah, I think you got all the points here. Okay. Yeah. Probably, I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> you can have a lot of fun with it if if, if uh, you've got the time and interest. So uh, that that's definitely you know if if you want to go that route for sure. And that's why presentations are so much fun. I think so. Everyone has a little different take on it. And if if yours is bare minimum meets the the uh, requirements, that's perfect too. Right? There's no no judgment for not going above and beyond. Um, it's it's just whatever you're up for and uh, interested in. So. All right, if you don't have any other questions online, I'll stop streaming. Uh, just hit me up on Discord uh, if you got questions or text me. Um, and I'll just be floating around the room, answering questions here and helping people online till about 11.50 or so. All right, awesome. You guys take care. I will see you around online. Um, I don't actually plan on having any streams the rest of the time. Uh, it's just work time, the 12, 12.8, 12.13, 12.15. Um, this is if there's something that you know, I want to show with everybody, I'll probably post it in the Discord, or maybe I, maybe I'll do a recording if I get a bunch of questions. Usually, if I have to answer the same question like two or three times, then I'm going to go make a recording for it or post in the Discord about it. Um, so this maze thing came up a bunch of different times. So I was like, oh yeah, let's just talk about it. Um, it saves time <laughs> it's me meeting with everybody individually. So um, and it, it's good to go over it again for sure. Um, again, um, don't get stuck on it and give up. Right. If you get stuck somewhere, let me know. I'm happy to to jump on and, and help out when I can, um, and we can go from there. So, and my phone has been freaking out lately. It reboots randomly, which is really sad. It was the cheap one. I didn't get the nice model, um, and now I'm paying for it. So, if I'm supposed to meet with you or um, you're trying to get a hold of me and I don't respond right away, like feel free to keep pestering me or try other methods. Um, I'm not always getting my Discord notifications. I found out. Um, so try text or calling. Um, that's perfectly fine. Like if, if we're supposed to meet at a certain time and I'm not around, please you know try again. I'm not not ignoring you. I just my phone's probably freaking out. So I'm um, happy to to jump on if uh, if I said that time was fine. So all right, take care, folks.